Hey guys, it's Sombershow001, back at it again with the video games, and back at it again with Destiny 2. So, we finally got the trailer for Season of Opulence. And I have to say, the trailer was a little bit disappointing, uh, uh, at least to me. Uh, nothing was really mentioned. And I get that because, I mean, what they mentioned in the old vidoc was that they weren't going to say anything. It was basically like, what if they had an entire season based around the, like, something like the Whisper Quest. So I get it. They don't want to show off too much. Um, there were no exotics mentioned. Um, almost nothing until, uh, until you check the article that they put up. So I was happy to see some different things, stuff that I didn't expect, uh, stuff that I did expect. And uh, it, let's just break it down and get right into it. So I guess the first thing is we're just going to put the trailer up. The trailer is like a minute, so it's really quick. So I'm just going to put the whole trailer up. And here we go. A new mystery awaits you, Guardian. Welcome to the season of opulence. What will you find in the Emperor's lost vaults? Treasure hunts will lead you to powerful weapons and armor. These will quickly boost your power level and prepare you for the menagerie. This season's all new six player match made activity. Strong Guardian. Prove your worth. Alright, now we're back. So, basically, from what you saw in that trailer, uh, they mentioned a lot of new things. It's definitely directed with Callus. There's a lot mentioning with Callus and the Leviathan, which we kind of already knew. Um, and it's actually really, really interesting what we're seeing here. We're seeing a lot of different things, you know, like this kind of a horde mode. They talk about the new six player, uh, you know, thing, which they call the Menagerie. And basically what it is, is it's match made, which is amazing, which is awesome. And basically it looks to me like a horde mode. And if you read the uh, This Week at Bungie article, they kind of mention that you get something called the Chalice of Opulence, which is where the name Season of Opulence comes from. And basically you trade in ruin, runes in order to get the gear that you want. You get to choose what gear you get. And basically the more you upgrade that chalice, the higher and better rewards you get. So eventually you'll get, you could possibly get exotics from it that you want, which would be really cool. And basically what it does is it's like a treasure hunt. The whole thing is like if you're in a room and you're searching for the treasure that's hidden somewhere and you would have to kill a bunch of enemies in order to get there, which I think is really cool. It's pretty interesting. I'm actually really excited about this even though the trailer didn't show us much. Maybe we'll get some other stuff. Um, although the This Week at Bungie article on their website really opened up some more stuff. Now we know a lot more, which is really, really good. Uh, like the fact that we there was a weapon and I, I saw it at first and I only saw it from the front and I went, I don't know if that's what I think it is, and it turns out it totally is. It's the Truth from Destiny 1, which was a rocket launcher. Um, back in the day, a lot, not a lot of people remember Truth all that much. Um, it had tracking rockets, and that was this exotic thing, because nothing had a tracking module at that time, except for, I believe... Actually, I think this was the only rocket launcher that had tracking in Destiny 1, because I don't think um, Galahorn had it. But uh, people loved it a lot, and it's really cool to see uh, see it return. It's something that not a lot of people know about, and this was confirmed that this is actually the truth in the This Week at Bungie article. It is confirmed. Uh, is also one of the quest items, which is really cool, because they put up the roadmap of what they're going to be releasing. So we know that's definitely in the game. Uh, there's some speculation that the Hawk Moon is in the game because of a hand cannon that was shown. Um, the barrel did look just like the Hawk Moon's barrel, but I would have to say it doesn't look like the Hawk Moon. It's kind of missing the talon on the grip. It could be maybe a version of Hawk Moon. It's really hard to say, or it's just kind of the same archetype, and they're really, you know, trying to trick us. Um, but most people think it is the Hawk Moon based on and on the Nines leaks from way back before he got shut down on Reddit, where he basically said. Here are the exotic weapons that are returning. You have, you know, it's like, here's what you're gonna get. You're gonna get Rose, 
you're gonna get Hawk Moon, and you're gonna get Dark Drinker. So far, he's been right about two there. So N on the Nine's been right about all of the stuff coming up to this, and but he was wrong about Dark Drinker. He was right that it's, it's a void heavy weapon, because, but we got Truth instead, unless Dark Drinker's also there somewhere. Um, maybe he didn't want to reveal too much, but it seems like that there's like just a small inconsistency there. Although he did, although they're both void weapons, so I guess he is kind of right because he said the same thing about all the way back in Forsaken before the trailer dropped with the new Titan Super with the gigantic fire hammer. He said it was an axe. So again, it, same mechanics, but you know, different weapon archetypes. So right now, I'm kind of more on his side. Um, I saw nothing about the rose in the trailer. There was no showing of it, no mention of it, until you looked into the de until you looked into the this week at Bungie, and I my jaw dropped. It actually doesn't go by the rose, which is weird. It goes by a different name. It's called Lumina, uh, and they showed it. And I was like, that has to be the rose because if you look at it, the barrel looks like twisted rose petals kind of twisting down and then you kind of have like this vine looking grip and it definitely is the rose it's definitely the rose it's just going by a different name unless that's just a cover name and they're really going to drop that the name is rose uh so this will be a totally new exotic so that'll be interesting um also in the trailer we see a warlock wearing a helmet and this looks like a, a lot like an older helmet which i can't remember the name of off the top of my head i want to say it's astroverse something and basically what it did was it, if you had the blink ability for the Warlock, you get like a faster recovery rate for that. Um, it'll be interesting to see if that's actually true. It just looks like it. It's just the new armor from Season of Opulence, so it looks like that. Um, other than that, this looks really good. I'm actually really excited, considering that's happening next week. And I'm kind of glad at the same time, although I was disappointed when watching the trailer, I'm kind of glad that at the same time, they don't show us too much. They're not giving us all the meat and potatoes. They're kind of just like, here, here's the side dish. Here, here's a little taste of what we're going to have. And then you'll figure it out from there. Um, so they kind of mention Menagerie. They don't mention anything about the raid. The raid is going to be in day one. So it's coming out on June 4th when Season of Opulence drops. Um, so, and they said they're tweaking Worlds First and the fact that they're going to have a contest mode so you can't power level. Uh, everything will be the same amount of difficulty no matter what level you're at. Uh, so it'll always be hard, and at least for that first 24 hours, and then they'll get rid of it. Um, so that would be really interesting. I want kind of want to see what this Crown of Sorrows raid is about. Um, we don't really know anything else about this. That, that's really all we know about this entire season. Um, we know that Solstice and Heroes is coming back. We know that we're going to have Age of Triumph. Um, and, and maybe we might get some more pies, like exotics or something like that. Um, you know, it's part of the whole vault experience. So they're definitely hiding stuff. So maybe we're going to get even more weapons than was already shown. Maybe we'll get some weapons from Destiny 1 that we haven't heard so long ago that we can get back besides the truth. Um, and the Hawk Moon. I mean, the Hawk Moon is notorious. The truth, not so much. So I'm, I'll, I'm still very surprised that the truth is a thing. Um, and that's launching with the Menagerie, which is, which is really cool. So I'm actually pretty interested. So basically what you want to do when you start is you're going to go to Benedict 44, who is the robot that kind of runs the Leviathan raid. And he'll start this thing. There'll be a power surge quest that you have to do. Even if you are level, you have to do it because it is your introduction to Season of Opulence. It's the only way you'll be able to do the raid on day one. So you do have to run that. If you're under level, it will give you 690 uh, gear so you can be of level so you can jump right in to what you're about to do. Which is really, really good and I like that. It's, it's interesting because I know they brought that into Season of Drifter and it didn't really help out so much. Uh, people didn't really like it. So now they're making it an integral part. Like you kind of have to do it in order you know, to really jump in and sink your teeth into this content instead, instead of having to wait. Uh, I personally am of level. I literally reached power level 700 on Sunday. So this will turn out really good for me so I can jump right in. I, can, I still have to do the power surge quest. Um, but honestly, it'll be really interesting to see what happens. I'm really into this whole Rose thing. I want to see what it can do. Uh, I mean, we already know what the truth can do. We already know what Hawkmoon can do, if that is true, if it really is in the game. 
Uh, so I'm really interested to see like what new exotics we're gonna get and what you know what are the different things and little idiosyncrasies that we have to make them unique, to make them powerful. Because I know we have the rose or we have the thorn, which was which is basically the rose when it got corrupted. Although I know it's not called the rose, I'm gonna personally call it the rose every time I do because I feel like it's a better name than Lumina. Uh, unless Lumina means something, maybe it's a type of rose. Um, typically when I think of it, it has to do with moon, and I know I'm kind of going off on a tangent here, but um, I, I think it's, it's really interesting. I, I think we're gonna see something really cool, something really interesting. I think it's gonna bring the player base kind of back, considering that um, Season of the Drifter wasn't really a big success. Black Armory was, I would say, a mild success. At the time, it was... No one really did anything in the Forges. People didn't really... Uh, weren't really interested. At least when it dropped, people, people were like, Oh, but no one was really high enough. Everything was too high and no one could do that. So they kind of learned from that. Um, and Season of the Drifter, I think the reason why people didn't really do anything with that is because no one likes playing Gambit. No one likes something around Gambit. Gambit's in a bad place right now. Um, but honestly, I think this, this is going to be a really cool thing that I think everyone's really going to love. Um, I, I would say up to this point, the annual pass has kind of been like a lukewarm response, considering that you had Black Armory all the way back in December, and it, it just seems that was kind of met with a lukewarm response until more content started opening up and people were getting a level, and you know, you finally got like Yoten in there and Izanagi's Burden. It, that, that was cool, and you got the last word, so that, that was pretty cool, so when the content started opening up, people liked it, and then you had the Season of the Drifter, where the only big thing was that Thorn was coming back, and then you had another weapon named Arbalest, that was it, and then they dropped that surprise with Outbreak Perfected, which was amazing, which was really well done, I think that's a definite win, and then now we have Season of Opulence, where we know nothing about it, except for like these little things, so I think it's interesting, I think it's very normal and I know people are debating if there's a year three coming personally I don't think there is I think they might do another annual pass uh maybe something that you don't have to pay for exactly but or something a little bit cheaper but they might roll out seasonal content again because I feel like they think it's really working out and I, I think it's interesting it's a new thing it's more focused on end game stuff rather than Here's a new campaign, boom, here you go. I think it saves more time for them and it gives us more meat and potatoes to eat, to you know, to work with. So I, so far I think it's kind of working well for them. Uh, at some point we might hear something about Destiny 3 if there is no year three of Destiny 2. Uh, that'll be real soon. I would guess maybe around E3, but I guess we'll never know. We'll probably see something about Season of Opulence like later towards uh, E3. If not, then maybe Destiny 3, but I really doubt it. Anyway, I've been rambling on for way too long. So you know what? I'm going to end it right here. Season of Opulence, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And apagando las luces. Robbing swords and ski masks, bruh Niggas ask for peace and the riot to bring violence Cause it's a game of cat and mouse and you gon' bleed